So in this video, I want to tell you about why I chose electrical engineering. And me specifically, I want to share you a little bit of my story and why I think I made the right decision and how it led me to an unexpected journey. And if you're especially someone who's in the stage in life where you don't know what you want to do, you think you have an idea, you're like, oh, I really want to do this major or that major or whatever, and you're just uncertain about the future, you should listen to this because it's going to really inspire you and help you clarify a lot about your life. A few weeks ago, I released a video sharing my resume. And in that resume, you'll see that I've interned at NASA or at MIT. I've done a PhD. I've worked as a professor. I mean, I've gotten tons of experience with electrical engineering and anybody who were to look at that resume would be like, oh my God, this guy's a natural. This guy was probably doing electrical engineering since he was five years old. And that could not be further from the truth. In fact, when I was in high school, I didn't really like physics that much. and I didn't really enjoy engineering that much. What I cared about more was like things like writing and filming. And I was just overall like a very artistic and creative person. I didn't care much for the sciences. I cared a lot more about the arts. And I even had a friend at the time who used to, like we used to write poems and we used to write stories together and we used to talk about writing and creating creativity and expression. And that was just the thing we wanted to do. And I'll be honest with you, when I was in high school, I was not very hardworking at all, at least in school. I was hardworking outside of school. I had many different jobs. I actually started working when I was 13 years old. I have been practically self-sustained since then. But a lot of times in high school, I didn't really care about my classes. I didn't feel the need to do the homework assignments. I just did not like school that much. Now, I'm going to tell you later how this all changed in college and why it did change in college. Now, luckily, my grades were not that bad. I think I still had like a 94 or 95 GPA, which was enough to get me into the schools I wanted to get into. And I remember in my senior year, my last year before graduation, I had told my parents, hey, I think I'm going to go to school for filming or for something like that, like broadcasting. And my parents were like, uh, are you sure? Or do you really think that's a good idea? And I came from a Middle Eastern background. So my family emphasized, like my uncles are all like doctors, engineers, some of them are business owners, but there's really the culture of like working very hard and doing things that are super practical. But thankfully, my parents never like forced anything on me. They said, hey, if you really want to do the writing, whatever creative stuff, go for it. But like, be careful. And I think that was actually really good advice because they were spot on. As a 17 year old, you don't really know what you want to do with your life. So like very often my high school counselor and a lot of people say, oh, just like do what you love. But like that advice is not practical at all. It has to be counterbalanced, especially if there's money involved. Now, I live in the United States where college costs money and is very expensive. So even though I chose to go to the University of Buffalo, which was a state school, it was much cheaper. It was only about like $20,000 per year, which included living on campus. Now that is cheaper than something like MIT, which is let's say like $60,000 a year or something like that. Still, there was money involved in the decision making. And whenever money is involved in the decision making, follow your heart or like that kind of stuff has to be balanced by something that is grounded in reality. And you have to think in terms of return on investment, ROI. And that was a lesson my parents taught me. It was actually a very valuable lesson. So when I did go to college, I looked around and my school at Buffalo had a really good engineering program. And at the time, I thought, okay, well, I'll close a mechanic lunch there. He seems to like it. He seems to be making good money. Why don't I just give it a shot and see what is going on? And before I did that, I did go ahead and check out the media department. I went to see like the broadcasting and filming components of my school. And I was also practical that I was not in Hollywood. I was not in LA. I was not somewhere where like filming was like very important and, and there was the right networks. And so basically, I looked at that opportunity. And I said, yeah, the upside here doesn't seem too high. A lot of these kids are probably going to graduate and they're not going to find jobs. And I'm spending a ton of money on college. So I need to get something practical. There's one thing I was doing very, very well at the time, which I want you to learn as well, was that in every decision I was making, I was thinking of the long-term consequence of my decision. Basically, everything I was doing or every decision I was making, I was imagining myself five years, 10 years from now, where that trajectory is likely going to be. Of course, none of us can predict the future, but you can at least have an idea of where the path goes. So anyway, I started with a mechanical engineering major and I went and I spoke to the other students who were doing it and I was taking the classes and I was doing the assignments. In the meantime, I was always looking around and seeing what everyone else was doing and I'm like, hmm, like this still doesn't feel like what I really should do. And it was just not very exciting. And I thought, okay, maybe I just need a bit more excitement. So in that spring of that year, my freshman year, I switched to aerospace engineering. It was like mechanical engineering on steroids because you get to take the mechanical concepts but apply them to airplanes. I thought airplanes were super cool. And again, I took the classes and I learned a lot about airplanes and I remember there was a CAD class where I designed an airplane wing or something like that. I thought that was super cool, but then I also thought to myself, do I really want to sit and do CAD like for the rest of my life? Like this stuff's still cool, but it doesn't feel right. Like there's no magic in it. Now at the time I was growing very interested in medicine as well. I was watching a show called House MD. It was a really good show about medicine, although it's not very accurate, but it's very cool. And then I decided in the fall of my sophomore year to study biomedical engineering. I basically learned about the human body and integrate in engineering with the human body. And again, the whole idea of engineering, I thought was like engineering is a really good major. It's only four years. It's going to pay really well. It's at least going 
gonna buy me time to figure out what I wanna do in my life after. But again, it was a very practical approach to choosing a career. And then I took the class and I learned a lot about the human body and I took the intro to biomedical engineering and I got an A in that class and I really, really enjoyed it. But again, I was thinking in terms of like, I'm somebody who still doesn't know what they want to do with their life. It makes no sense to like super specialize in something that's only related to medicine. And I had already given up the idea on medical school at that point. I, I decided I don't wanna be a doctor. Cause again, that's gonna take like a 10, 12 year commitment. And how am I gonna commit something for 12 years if I don't even know what I want to do? So my decision making was a lot focused on flexibility and on just like what feels right. But what felt right also was grounded in reality. So it's the combination of like, this feels good, but also this is practical. Then in spring of my sophomore year, I stumbled upon a group of people who were doing electrical engineering. They were juniors, they were in the library. And I took a look at one of them. They were doing like a circuit analysis assignment. And it just looked super cool. Like the circuit diagrams looked cool. They looked really cool. And I think that's part of my artistic background where like things that look cool and look intriguing grab my attention. So I really liked the circuit diagrams and I liked how they were like puzzles where you can solve like where the electric current is going and how much current is being distributed on the different paths and how much resistance there is each. It just seemed like a really cool thing. So I asked them, I said, what are you guys studying? They said electrical engineering. And I said, wow, this looks pretty cool. And they said, yeah, man, you should probably like switch to that because it's pretty cool. And we're like one year ahead of you. So we could probably like tell you what to watch out for, what to avoid, kind of give you some mentorship. And that's exactly what I did. And I stayed in school that summer and I took some summer classes to make up for the fact that I switched my major, I don't know how many times. I think I took circuit analysis and I took some other class and I had taken signals and systems in that spring year and that spring of my sophomore year and that changed my life forever. I loved that class so much. It was again so intriguing and so cool and learning about the Fourier transforms and learning about the properties of signals and systems. It was just like another world and I thought okay wow this is really really cool and I thought I had like unlocked it. I thought okay I figured out what I want to do with my life. It's electrical engineering. This is it. And then I had a few sexy internships. I went to NASA. I know it's a company called Northrop Grumman and then I came to time to graduate. And I was graduating and even though I thought like I was I had finally unlocked the game I finally achieved it and like beat the final beast uh, a new beast was unveiling which was like okay now I figured out what to do for a major but like what am I gonna do with my life and at the time I had a really sexy job offer in LA like six-figure job with like really nice weather nice location whatnot but I thought to myself like for me like is this really what I want to do because I don't really care about the money for me it was never about the money it was always about the learning and the experiences I've always like followed my own curiosity that's why I switched my major so many times is I would be curious about something and I would follow it but again that curiosity is always grounded in reality because I want to make sure that what I do has a return on investment is actually going to matter is actually going to help people at the time I had met a professor at my university who was doing research and I thought hmm why don't I work with him on research and maybe do a master's or even a PhD and part of my decision making was that like doing a PhD would probably be cool because it would buy me more time I enjoy being in university I like the freedom versus going to get a corporate job is like not very fun idea for me like you have to kind of sit in a cubicle and just work and obviously not all jobs are like that but at the time that was like my perception of a job and again I went and I asked a ton of graduate students and I figured out that okay I really do want to do the PhD and then again in the PhD I thought I had unlocked the game again where I said yes I'm gonna be a researcher I'm gonna like do research I'm gonna do design I'm gonna do things of that nature I'm gonna be in the research and development department of whatever company I'm gonna work in. and then year after year I am in the PhD program and I'm learning more and more and I start reading a lot about psychology I start reading a bit about business in my free time I start reading about other areas and how they can be like bridged and interconnected with engineering and a few years later I'm back in that same now what position where I am graduating soon and I have a lot of options. There's many jobs here in the United States for somebody who is skilled at electrical engineering and has research abilities. But then it's also like, what do I really want to do with my life? Like I'm still very young and I'm full of energy and I really think now is the time to take risks. So I still want to do something that involves risk in my life because I don't want to look back on my life and think that I've taken like a safe, boring route. I really want to do something exciting and something that even if it doesn't work out, I'll say, wow, that was really worth trying. But the thing that has served me really well is that I've always really like valued life and I've valued people and I valid experiences and I never took anything for granted. I've always been honest with myself. If things did not feel right for me, I would get up and leave or I would just not, I would I would always focus on hyper improving myself. That's why in my videos, you might think this guy's a little crazy because I like, I literally track every hour of my day. I track everything I do. I track my sleep. I track a lot of things. I'm constantly like optimizing myself. I'm trying to be as hyper efficient as possible while enjoying life as much as possible. Like I really allocate time to go have fun with my friends or, or something like that or go spend time with my family or go play sports but when it's time to get stuff done I, I do get stuff done I don't waste time on social media I just really value every minute of my time and I appreciate that life is like a very precious gift and I want to make the most out of it that's gonna involve some risk but if there's one takeaway I want you to take from my story from this video is that like everything on the internet looks amazing and like oh everybody knows what they're doing no one knows what they're doing including myself I probably have a better idea than most people on what I'm doing and I'm going in a more clear direction but no one really knows what they're doing and that's because everyone's going through life for the first time life is a game that we're all 
exposed to the first time, no one has played life twice. So everyone's figuring out on the go, including you. So there's two pieces of advice I would have for you based on my story, which is one, like always be true to yourself and ask yourself, like, what do I really want? And try to figure out what do you want? What do you want to do with your life? But two, always be grounded in reality. And we saw the example of when I was in high school and I really liked writing and I really liked filming. And now I do these things as a hobby, but I don't do that for a career because I was grounded in reality where I thought I'm going to spend a lot of money. I really want to do something that has a return on investment. And then I was open to the idea that I'm going to change and evolve and my interests are going to change. And in high school, I didn't really care about engineering. Now I have a freaking engineering YouTube channel. So like things change, you're probably going to change. You're probably going to learn many things and things are going to evolve. So just like have faith that things will work out. And again, do all you can. Don't waste time. If you're on TikTok, I have no idea what you're doing. If you're on Instagram all day, I have no idea what you're doing. Like I, I seriously don't. Like take time to figure out what to do with your life. Don't add pressure. Turn it into a fun game. Talk to people. Do things that are productive and just enjoy the journey because very soon you're going to die and you're going to look back and you're going to be like, damn, I wish I had done something more interesting with my life. Now, if you're still figuring out what you want to do for a career and what you want to do with your life, whether it be in engineering or whatever, I gave this amazing talk at Xavier University where I talked in detail about how to design your career and how to have like a step-by-step -step scientific method to do that. And I really think you should watch that. You'll figure out your whole life basically by watching that. That is not an exaggeration. So I'll see you over there. Peace, love.